What does the millimeter measurement indicate? Think about it. A zoom lens of 100 millimeters, whoa, you can get really close. What is 100 millimeters? It's 10 centimeters. It's this much. So what does it measure? Well, first you have to understand it measures the focal length. It's the distance from the sensor, the red part, to the convergence of light. Okay? The bigger your lens, the greater the focal length. The focal length is what you're measuring. You say, I got a 100 millimeter lens. Okay? So, what's the ideal focal length for dentistry? The focal length dictates how far or close you're going to be to the patient 60 to 100 and if you don't have any exposure to dental photography and you want to go out and buy a new lens stay between 60 and 100 is the ideal for dentistry okay if you are too short like under 60 you get a 50 40 30 15 millimeter lens you'll introduce a lot of distortion because with a shorter focal length, you have to be closer to the patient to compose your images. We'll talk about that in a second. If you are too long, over 105, there is no apparent benefit. Plus, now you have to pull away back because your lens is zoomed too much, if you know what I mean. Okay, so just keep that in mind that the millimeter indicates the focal length and you want to be between 60 and 100. At 105 and 85, there was minimal difference. I would say even 55 or 60, still you would have the same image. And that's why I told you before, when it comes to focal length, any lens, macro lens that goes from 60 to 100, not a problem, okay? But look what happened when I was at a smaller rating, knowing that I had to come closer to get the same frame. At 35, do you start seeing how my ears are kind of disappearing in the background? My nose gets a little bigger. And let me go to 18, watch this. Now I know I'm not the most attractive guy in the world, but I certainly don't look like the picture on the left, right? This is what we call the fisheye effect. And if you're not careful, let's say you're using your cell phone, you get really close to the patient and you get a face that doesn't represent what the patient actually looks like. Distortion is a real problem if you don't understand photography. And here is how it translates to intraoral images. What's this? The top and the bottom image have the same distortion problem that I showed you before extraorally. So imagine sending me an email and saying, Dr. Nolan, here's my pictures for this patient. And I get a picture like the top right. Again, I'm not gonna fault you, but if you say, well, I think uh, the upper arch is very constricted. I'm gonna say, well, with all due respect, you can't tell from this picture why it's distorted. The top picture looks like the maxilla is very narrow. Well, the distortion made the maxilla look narrow. <laughs> Look at the bottom picture with the proper macro lens. Now you have proper dimensions and representation of what the patient looks like. Do you guys see how important it is to dive deeper? Now at that point, please allow me to say that I don't mind if you don't do it, but this is what I'm going to do for you for the next two years. I'm going to teach you orthodontics to the point you understand all the principles and you can practice it at the highest level.